were not aware of this? <laughs> Your posterior better contact someone at once. The following is a production of TeamBoyTV.com. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? It's your boy, Big Q, Team Boy TV. This is The Raw Report. How y'all feeling, man? Hey, I know. I owe y'all an apology, man, because I didn't really cover the Go Home show for Extreme Rules. I didn't cover Raw last Monday, uh, personally, because I thought the show was awful. You know, I was like, halfway through it, I was like, oh my God, this show is just terrible. I, I don't know what they, were, what they were trying to prove, but you know. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even. I'm not even gonna do this. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna do this. But this right here is crazy. I was thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly disgusted with that whole situation. But check this out, though. Uh, you guys enjoyed Extreme Rules, man. It, it ended up being better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, there was some good stuff that kind of popped off in that and uh, made it live. You know what I mean? Like you know, they kicked it off with the little WLC. You know, with the micro coal and. Uh, what was it? JB Elf and Jerry the King Smaller. You know, I, I like that, man. Uh, you know, and I know the, since the first time I saw El Torito, and I'm trying to remember, did he debut with the Los Matadores? I'm not, I can't know if I, I don't know if I remember whether or not he, he debuted with them or not, or did he come later? I'm not quite sure. Um, maybe he did. That's kind of because I don't know. I don't watch a lot of SmackDown, so, I you know, I can't really. I remember when they came on Raw, though. I just, you know, I just can't really remember. Clearly, if uh, if uh, the the the, the uh, El Torito was with them, but you know him and um, Hornswoggle, man. And you know when I asked in the last podcast that I did the week before the Go Home Show, uh, how many of you guys were interested in paying to see uh, a match between El Torito and Hornswoggle? Well, so look, you didn't have to pay for it, but it was on the you know it was on the card or whatever. I thought it was cool. Thought it was all right. Um, what else? Uh, you know, the whole uh, Bray Wyatt, John Cena thing with the, you know, and that's one of the things that I actually thought was good from the Go Home show is that uh, I definitely like the direction they take in Bray Wyatt with the, you know, especially with the kids and stuff. Because I was just thinking, and I think I said it on the last podcast, is that, you know, the way the storyline is progressing with Bray Wyatt uh, is working out pretty good because, uh you know, it's supposed to be, you know, him taking all John Cena's fans and turning his fans against against him and stuff like that. And, you know, and it's working. It's working really, really well. And I was thinking, well, um, you know, because they had this uh, this thing of a jig where the fans would vote and the fans, you know, quote unquote, voted uh, for John Cena to fight all of the Wyatts or whatever. And, um, you know, he was quite upset about it on the show the next week or whatever. And uh, it was like, why? Well, you know, and it, the whole build up was nice. And I was thinking to myself like, okay, well, he still got the kids on his side. So that'll work. And then they pulled that little stunt with the kids or whatever. And I thought that was brilliant. Now th- this whole situation with John Cena and, and Bray Wyatt is pretty much uh, one of the bright spots in the WWE at the moment. I like it. Um, the, the performance they put on at uh, extreme rules was awesome. I, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, the whole in uh, incorporation of, of the kids and, and little Johnny, I thought it was fantastic. You know, I, I like I like that a, a whole lot. Now, you know, after coming off that, and then, you know, of course, we had the Shield versus uh, Evolution, which, you know, honestly, that match wasn't as good as I, I, I wanted it to be. You know, I, thought, I, I expected a little bit more of an epic showdown between those two teams um, at the pay-per-view. It was still good, though. It was still it was still really, really good. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm cool with that. And, you know, it was other stuff, you know, like um, – you know, I, I don't know. I, I still, still ain't really feeling Paige as the champion, man. I'm still, still not feeling that. You know, and I, and I really, really wanted uh, Tamina to win that title, but I know that they, you know they're kind of behind this this uh, this Paige chick. So it is what it is, you know, and and it's gonna be that way, and it, and that's fine. I, I ain't got no 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 real real issue with it and whatnot. Um, but all in all, you know, I actually enjoyed the pay per view. It was actually pretty good. I actually thought the pay per view was better than the go home show on Raw. And actually, it was you know better than this raw that we're getting ready to cover here today. Um, overall, um, you know, I, I would give the show maybe like you know if it was going to do it on a scale of one to ten, I would give them you know a seven or you know a strong six, six and a half, seven somewhere around in there. You know, I thought the I thought the show was all right. You know, I mean it was it was pretty good, but you know, uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan, their match, man. Um, I thought, I thought they put on a pretty decent show, even though I don't, I'm not a fan of the storyline. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, once we get into breaking down this raw, it, 
you know, and I, I, I read this thing that, uh, you know, Mick Foley was, you know, telling WWE, look, man, yeah, yeah, y'all can't really be doing this today, and Brian, and, you know, and that's that's the WWE way, is it not? You know, you you build this tremendous star, and next thing you know, um, you know, they break them down. You know, they they have them. In, you know, the things that they're doing with, with Daniel Bryan and Kane is just it's ridiculous. <laughs> if you ask me, I I don't know who's writing the story, but it's this is bad. It's very very bad. So you know, um, before we get into uh, the 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 raw report, man. Um, again, I just want to thank everybody who has been, uh, you know, paying attention and uh, listening and downloading the raw report. Uh, see, we have a lot of you guys uh, going over and checking us out on YouTube, and you know, y'all downloading the, the podcast from iTunes, which is awesome. Uh, see, we got a lot of Spreaker participation. Uh, you know, look, my my Android users, though, you guys are representing hard. You know, you you guys are the guys now. Not a whole lot of iOS guys, but you know, there are some, but the Android guys are, are representing hard. I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out there. But yeah, man, you know, it, it's been fun and, and I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are actually, uh, having fun with the, with the raw report and, uh, and downloading and stuff. I, I thank you for that. But you know, we're going to go ahead and take a little break right here, you know, and, uh, pay a visit to one of our sponsors and stuff. When we come back, we will be breaking down the raw report. <laughs> Check it out, guys. If you're looking to build your online presence to gain a larger audience, there's only so much that social media can do for you. Although social media is a powerful way to build a following, there is nothing like having your own hosted website. And that's where Domain.com comes in. Domain.com offers the very best in web hosting services. And with plans starting at just under $4 a month, it's super affordable as well. And now, because you guys are faithful followers of Team Boy TV's Raw Report, you can get yourself a sweet combo deal if you go to TeamBoyTV.com and click the Domain.com button. Once you click the button, you get redirected to the Domain.com promo page, where once you sign up and use the promo code DOMFREE, that's D-O-M-F-R-E-E, you can get yourself a free domain. That's a free website that you can use to build your audience. And Domain.com web hosting is packed with bonus features, too. Check this out. All web hosting plans come with a $100 Google AdWords bonus, a $50 Yahoo slash Bing search marketing credit, $50 on Facebook advertising, a free yellowpages.com listing, and get this, a free toll-free phone number if you live in the U.S. And if you're like me and know nothing about website design, Domain.com even has the awesomely easy drag-and-drop site builder to get you up and running right away. So what are you waiting for? There is no excuse not to get your online presence rolling right now. Remember, go to TeamBoyTV.com, click the Domain.com button, and use the promo code DOMFREE, D-O-M-F-R-E, to get your free domain to use on your website today. And now, back to our program. All right, so let's get into this thing, right? Let's get into this thing. Um... We started off the show, and I kind of, you know, for you for you guys who have the WWE Network, uh, you kind of saw the uh, pre-match, I mean, the pre-show, the Raw pre-show. Uh, they was talking about how they were going to uh, make uh, Dean Ambrose defend his title uh, in the 20-man battle royal, <laughs> you know, which I thought that was crazy. So I figured, like, you know, this what, what this told me was that they were trying to find some kind of way to get this belt off of, uh, Ambrose, for whatever reason, I don't know why yet. Maybe, well, we'll find out later. I think I know the reason why, but you know, I want to give it away too early. Anyway, the show opens, and uh, you know, the show comes out, show their solidarity and whatnot. Uh, you know, then all the boys come out. You know, uh, it was everybody. I think who was in there it was uh, Big Show, Sheamus, Mark Henry, Dolph Ziggler, Xavier Woods, Zack Ryder, uh, Sin Cara, Titus O'Neil. I can't, it was a bunch of them, you know, Heath Slater, you know, a bunch of them people in there, uh, Kobe Kingston, um, you know, Mark Henry, you know, um, so basically, basically, you know, Triple H was just trying to make it seem, uh, another, like, uh, same, same thing I did with Daniel Bryan, how you, Triple H come out and just try to do everything in his power to make the life of, you know, the shield, you know, rough or whatever, you know, it, it was a good battle royal, right? Um, well, no, it was it was some cool stuff that happened in there, you know. Kofi Kingston, you know, you know how he likes to get down in battle royal situations, and he had a couple little things that he did, and and that kind of thing. Um, you know, we had a, a good showing uh, by Rybaxel, you know, uh, some good stuff, man. And, you know, and I, what, the part that, about it that I thought was really cool, as far as a storytelling piece, was um, you know the way they showed uh, 
Reigns and and uh, Rollins on the outside cheering their boy on. Man, it was it was awesome. I, I thought that was cool. You know, and the way they're building the shield, man. You know, and it's funny to think that you know, just a like a, a couple of weeks ago, or last month or whatever, they were talking about splitting these boys up. You know what I mean? No, they they, they they're so good together. You know, and, and even in defeat, they're they're really really good together. Either way. The match went on for a while. I went through a commercial break and everything. And um, Sheamus ends up winning the match. You know, it came down to him and, and Ambrose at the end. Uh, you know, it was a good match, man. You know, and honestly, you know, I guess they wanted us to believe that Ambrose was going to pull it off. Uh, Sheamus ended up getting the win through, uh, you know, a bro kick to uh, Ambrose. And then he tossed them over the top rope. But I'm a, it's an interesting note. I'm going to point out, though. And, I don't, you know, they didn't bring this up in the broadcast. Uh, when Santino got eliminated, they threw him through. He went over the second rope. He didn't go over the top rope. And when I saw that, I thought there was going to be some little trickery, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of trickery there. But nah, they acknowledged it as a as a real deal elimination. And Santino didn't come back. But I just wanted to point that I did see that. You know what I mean? Um, so we go to uh, uh, what was the next match? The next match is Rev and Dam, uh, Rev and Dam and and, uh, and Cesaro, right? And uh. You know, Rob Van Dam and uh in that match uh in the um at the Extreme Rules was with that triple threat elimination match. He was pretty good, man, even though he did cut his eye on the, the garbage can or whatever, and you can kinda of see it when he was doing his little backstage interview before he came up for his match. Uh Paul Heyman, again, still spectacular. You know you know, this dude just gets better as time goes on. You know, what I mean I I I nothing really I mean, and honestly, the whole Brock Lesnar defeat the Undertaker for the undefeated streak at WrestleMania stuff really ain't really, really started. It ain't, it is not as irritating as I think that they wanted it to be. Uh, cause it's, cause it's, to me, it's hilarious. You know, especially like the whole, uh, knock knock who's there, Mike client. You know, I, I loved it. You know what I mean? But he didn't do that this week. He did that last week. Um, but you know, either way, um, at first I was like, I don't know exactly how I feel about this whole Cesaro and Paul Heyman thing, but you know, I, I like it. Um, so it was cool, you know what I mean. Um, so the, the the way they kind of played it, because I I was trying to figure out how they was gonna do this, you know. I guess they're gonna use R- R- RVD with his experience to help elevate Cesaro as a heel or whatever. Uh, you know, I think they're doing a pretty decent job because you know at, at the end of the match, uh, Cesaro ended up getting disqualified because he was beating uh, Rob Van Dam Rob Van Dam down in the corner while Rob Van Dam had his foot kind of hung in the in the top rope. Uh, so they disqualified him, and you know Heyman was doing the whole Heyman thing, like, hey, you know, um, don't get disqualified, I mean, don't get suspended. You know, it was cool. I liked it. You know, I, I thought it was great. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they were on the way to having a solid match. The the finish wasn't well done. Um, it was flat ending. The crowd didn't react all that well to it. Uh, really, don't see uh, too many DQ finishes like that with a guy going after an eye. You know. But at least it led to Cesaro getting booed, which was that's what they was trying to do. So they were actually trying to to get uh, you know Cesaro over as a heel, and you know it's finally finally uh, coming coming over. So you know I think it's nice. Um, so apparently WWE is uh, giving away twenty five dollar gift cards on WWEshop.com dot com if you refer people uh, to sign up for the WWE network. That's all I got to say about it. <laughs> you know what I mean, and. Um, so then we get the whole uh, Wyatt sound, and then uh, we see Bray light his candle. I mean, his what is it, a lantern? And it was all like, "We're here," you know. And it's cool, you know. Um, you go to a commercial break. You come back out there in the chair, uh, you know. And this is where uh, uh, Bray Wyatt cut another one of his amazing promos. And again, and y'all know how I do it. I can't really. Do the promo justice, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna play the clip. You guys will, will love this. This was this was awesome. You know what I mean? Like, and and honestly, what it looked like to me, you know what I mean? And I'll talk a little bit more about it when um when the clip finished playing. But what it looked like to me was that they're kind of setting up a, a, a like, and I and I said this at, at WrestleMania, but people was was laughing at me about doing a uh, a double turn with Bray Wyatt and John Cena. But it looked like we might be getting there because you know, listen to some of the stuff that Bray Wyatt is saying in this promo. <laughs> Abigail always told me that I was born to lead. She said, one day, Bray, you will change the world. And I believed her. I 
always believed her. But this world we live in, this horrible world we live in, it has very, very wicked ways about it. And they, they would always snub their nose up at me. They would always look down on me. They would refer to me as a piece of trash. They referred to me as a nobody. <laughs> and they don't even know him. But those people, they have made this day so sweet for me. And oh, what a glorious day it is. Because last night I, Bray Wyatt, became somebody. <laughs> last night, John Cena's fear was personified by that of a singing child. <laughs> He's got the whole world in his house. He's got the whole world in his house. He's got the whole world in his house. He's got the whole world in his You can't fool the children, John, for they are the foundation of what tomorrow shall bring. Their ears are so eager to hear, and their minds so eager to learn, and their innocent little eyes see right through you, John Cena. John Cena tells all of you that I am a monster. And he is right. I am a monster. And oh, how cruel I can be. <laughs> he would also have you believe that my message, my honorable message, is nothing but lies. And that I only wish to watch the world burn and I have to give it to you, John. You're right again. I do wish to watch this world burn. <laughs> I wish to watch it burn as a farmer watches his spoiled crops burn so they may rise up again. This world must be burnt down so that it can be reborn. And it will be reborn in my image, the image of Wyatt. Yeah, man. <laughs> John Cena thinks that, that I do this, everything I do, all of this, I only do it for myself. And that, my friends, that is where John Cena is dead wrong. I do this for the children. I do this for the poor man that stands day and night begging on the side of the street, starving because they didn't think he was smart enough to live in this world. I do this for the teenage girl who wakes up crying every morning when she looks in the mirror because they didn't think she was beautiful enough to be the prom queen. I do this for each and every one of you. And as of today, today, tomorrow, and every day passing forward, John Cena stands alone. And alone he shall fall. But you children, you shall stand with me and you never have to be alone ever again. You stand with me and you will remember me not as a monster, but you will remember me for what I truly am. A good 
God. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 <laughs> I mean, you know, what can you say? Like, that was, that sounded like a face type promo to me. Saying, you know, John Cena called him a monster. But yeah, he, he may be a monster, but, you know, he's doing it for the, for you know, for the kids. He's doing it for the, you know, the, the homeless dude. He's doing it for the, you know, the little girl. You know, I mean, like, come on, man. That was, that was, that was brilliant. I, I just, I don't know. You know, I, I thought it was, was awesome. You know, and, uh, you know, the, the whole thing, now, the one thing that might kind of throw a, a, a curve in it, he did call himself a god at the end, which is classic. It's a classic heel move, you know, kind of reminds me of JBL and stuff like that. Either way, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, as always, you know. Um, then we move into uh, Cody Rose, what Gold does versus Ryback with Curtis Axel. Uh, again, they're kind of setting this whole thing up with, with, with Gold Dust and, and Cody. I'm not feeling it. You know what I mean? I just, I'm really not, um, just not really feeling it. You know what I mean? It, it, it just, it's not working, you know what I mean? It's just because it's just they just need, if they're gonna do it, they must well just go ahead and do it. This slow build nonsense just it ain't getting the job done. Um, I don't think people really care about it that much, you know what I mean? It, Ryback's offense was was boring. The, the crowd did, didn't care. Um, you know, Cody had a nice little comeback with a disaster kick. Uh, that 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 really wasn't enough to, to put the match over. Um, you know, it's just another you know week of them dragging this whole thing out. You know, which was pretty much going to put Cody back and in, and in, into being a heel. Um, I, I, you know, for real, I would I would rather see Cody as a face. I, I would love to see Goldust be the heel, but you know, whatever, man. I just you know this this whole situation just kind of gets on my nerves. Um, this whole backstage stuff with Kane and and, and Brie Bella, it, it was all it's awful. You know what I mean? And and, and the stuff they're doing with Kane's, it's, it's like a bad horror movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it is a bad bad horror movie, and you know. It just, I don't know, it just, it just seems like, it, who wrote this? This was terrible, you know what I mean? I ain't even gonna talk about it, you know. Uh, Los Matadores and El Torito were in the ring celebrating Cinco de Mayo. It was awesome, right? You know, El Torito and, you know, they was having a good time out there in El Torito and, the, and you know, and I'm like, um, I, think, I can't remember, what, can't think of off the top of my head which one of them, cause I don't know the El, the, the Los Matadores by their, their Los Matadores names, Fernando, and I know them as, uh, uh, the Cologne boys, whatever. But what, you know, the, the guy, how I want to say it's, I want to say it's, uh, oh, God, now I, now I can't even think of the dude's name. But, you know, when he was, had the little crazy, over exaggerated, you know, uh, you know, Hispanic, uh, accent and, you know, talking about, you know, the, the Juniverse and, and he was always like, huh, you know, making these little, it was, it was awesome. I, I, I really liked the Los Matadores, man, and El Torito, you know, but three MB's music hits. Out comes 3MB. They come out. They want to do a truth. Uh, El Torito was trying to offer Hornswoggle some candy, you know, and Hornswoggle, man, you got to get Hornswoggle doing his thing. He, he really is, man. He's doing, he's doing his thing. But, you know, he ate the candy and then spit it out and then smacked the candy out of, uh, El Torito's hand. <coughs> and then, uh, you know, pretty much a little brawl ensued and that kind of thing. Uh, the whole thing with the sombrero over Hornswoggle and then, it was awesome. The, go, the little gore, you know, the, the, that, that is, that's some entertaining stuff. I liked it. You know, I liked it a lot. You know, and it was pretty good. Um, <sighs> come back from commercial break, and then we see Kofi Kingston in the room, in the ring. Uh, he didn't even have an intro. Uh, Kofi Kingston has been relegated to uh, a, a really talented jobber. You know what I mean? Uh, it's sad too, because I remember when they were doing this thing where uh, he was going up against Randy Orton. This is a few years back, man, and. I thought Kofi was ready for for prime time, and actually, I really wanted this. You know, I don't think we've seen it yet. I haven't really seen Cody in a heel role. They need to do something with not Cody, Kofi. They need to do something with Kofi though, because Kofi he has a lot of talent, man. But they're not they're not really really using him. But you know, just like I, I, you know, we suspected since he out there already with no intro on TV, we knew he was going to be squashed. And, and I'm gonna point this out. I'm gonna point this out before I start talking about Lana. 
uh, it's kind of, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing this out there. You know, look like uh, they've been putting Rusev in there, squashing all the black dudes on the on the roster. It looks a little suspect to me. Just throwing it out there, you know. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, Lana comes out there, you know, with this, this, you know, the, she had a blue dress on this time, and you know, and I'm gonna tell you what I love what they're doing with her intro, right? You know, I, I you know, let us say they added music to it, but I love now when she comes out on the stage, she does that little turn so everybody can see them goods. You know what I mean? Like that that part right there is like. Send it over the top for me. Like, you know, she come out there. Like, it's one thing to come out there with the little skirt on, but to come out there and do that little, that little turn that she does, you know, I, I love it. You know what I mean? But just like we thought, but I, like, I got to give, give, give Kofi some props because Kofi, you know, showed some, he had more offense than anybody else that Rusev has faced so far. Uh, you know, but whatever. I came down to the same thing. Uh, what they call it? The camel clutch, aka the, uh, what is it called? The accolade? I don't know. Uh, you know, Kofi taps out. <sighs> you know what I mean? There it is. And that's it. Um, and then uh, we find out that the WWE Network now has finally made its way to Xbox One. Yay. Uh, and that kind of thing. So I think that is a perfect opportunity for us to take uh, another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the second half of the show and that kind of thing. Yo, 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 JB from Team Boy TV, co-host of Team Boy TV Live every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we discuss updates, breakdowns, and just about everything NFL. Hosted by yours truly, Big Q, co-hosted by me, JB, and my boy Glass from Get With It Sports. If some reason you missed the show, step up and had your feel, visit TeamBoyTV.com. What up, football fans? You want to stay up on the latest of Team Boy TV happenings? Like us on our Facebook page, at Team Boy TV on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Team Boy TV and at VernieB73. You can also check out our YouTube page, at Team Boy TV Turbo, where there's live events, videos, among other things. You can also keep up with the latest happenings, live chats, uh, question and answer sessions on Google Plus at Team Boy TV. Thank you once again for watching Team Boy TV. Right, so you know we had this weird stuff going on with Kane and Brie Bella and Daniel Bryan, you know, and Stephanie, you know, coming out there talking about how you know, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan and them couldn't leave. No, no, no. First, it was stay in this room until your match because it's the only thing that's safe for you. And then it's like, oh, y'all want to leave? Let me go get your uh, car and get it bring and bring the car for you. And then it's all like, wait a minute, y'all can't leave until you have your match, or are we going. Have you relinquished? You know, this this was I am, this is so stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, Dan Bryan comes out to fight Alberto Del Rio for the non the non title match or whatever. So, you know, you know, the whole match was basically like, okay, when is Kane coming out? When is Kane coming out? Blah blah blah. Uh, it was a pretty decent match though. Uh, so Kane's music hits uh, at the you know uh, about the sixteen minute mark. You know, um, and everybody looking around for Kane, looking around for Kane. Kane's nowhere to be found. Uh, Bree and uh, Daniel Bryan make their way up the ramp to go and try to get in the car to get up out of here. Uh, that kind of thing. Kane comes out of there, jumps on the car. They run him over or drive off, and he falls on the floor. Now he's laying on the on the, on the pavement. Like I'm thinking, Daniel Bryan, because he got out of the car and take a look and took a look at him. I'm thinking Daniel Bryan is gonna come go get back in the car and and, and back over him. But you know, I was like, well, how are they gonna pull that off? But you know, that's, you know, that's what I was thinking. Either way, the whole segment was, was terrible. Uh, awful, awful, awful. You know what I mean? Um, we get another, uh, vignette, vignette about, uh, Adam Rose. And I don't know if, how I feel about this guy just yet. You know what I mean? I only really seen him wrestle once on, uh, NXT, uh, and that kind of thing. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see though. Cause you know, he, deb- he debuts tonight. Um, we get that Intercontinental Championship rematch. Bad News Bear versus Big E. Uh, you know, Big E was, you know, I was happy to see them give Big E that push. But then when he became champion, he became lame, just like they kind of doing with Daniel Bryan. So I was kind of glad to see at Extreme Rules, they took the belt off of him. I was glad about that. And um, so we got a rematch tonight. I knew he wasn't going to win. And, of course, he didn't. Um, they, they they had a good match. Uh, the crowd wasn't really, you know, uh, in, they didn't really enter Big E that much no more. Uh, he was he was booked really, really bad over the last, like, couple months. You know, he wasn't even on TV last month, I don't think. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. It was, you know, I, Barrett is the guy. You know, I think this is this is a, a good way to go. I was surprised that John Cena wasn't on TV tonight, especially after that Bray Wyatt, uh, that Bray Wyatt promo. He went, but he's they, they talking about he's going to be on um, on main event the next night or whatever. And this Mr. T, this Mr. T promo aired. And you know what? This was so funny. And it's again, I, I can't do it justice. I got to play it. I got to play it. I got to play it. <laughs> A special Mother's Day message from Mr. T. Please indulge me, and I hope I don't bore you. Beneath the Mohawk, underneath the tough talking persona, is an old fashioned mama's boy who just happens to love his mother very much. Every time I think about my mother, it sends a certain feeling up and down my body. My mother got that big, thick strap and whipped our behind. Whipped our behind. Thank you, mother, 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 mother. Like no other. Every time that I cried and my mother didn't know why. How can I tell my mother that I love her? That I love her? That I love her? I wanted my mother to know that I love her every day. Not just on Mother's Day, but I love my mother on President's Day. Election Day, on Labor Day, Independence Day, Columbus Day, Earth Day, Memorial Day, Flag Day, Groundhog's Day, April Fool's Day, New Year's Day, St. Patrick's Day, and yes, even on Father's Day, I love my mother. My mother, your mother, all mothers. My mother, your mother, all mothers. Thank God for mothers. I don't know. It, it, you know, it a lot of people are, you know, saying, oh, wait, why did they do Mr. T was pretty serious at the Hall of Fame ceremony, you know, talking about his mother and whatnot. And, you know, they turned into this big joke or whatever. I don't know, man. I thought it was funny. You know what I mean? I did. You know what I mean? And I actually thought it was pretty funny at the Hall of Fame ceremony. I did. Because this was supposed to be him inducting himself into a wrestling Hall of Fame and he owned some other stuff. You know, it, I don't know. I thought it was good. You know, so that was straight. And then uh, we get uh, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger coming out with their, uh, l- what was it, the list of the uh, the deportees or something, <laughs> a deportation list. That's what they had. It was awesome. And uh, he had, uh, you know, Cesaro and Heyman. He had uh, S- uh, uh, Emma and uh, Santino on there. He had, uh, you know, it was really funny when he was talking about um, – Seamus and, and, and Paige, you know, like they, they have a, the sun hadn't touched their skin since 1997. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, but I was supposed to set up, uh, what's his face? Adam Rose to come out. And, you know, I wanted to see how this whole exotic express stuff was going to translate on the big stage. And, you know, I, it was fun. I thought it was fun. I, I really wanted to see him do a little bit more than that little kick off the, um, off the, the, the rope or whatever. Uh, you know, I wanted to see him do a little bit more because, you know, do look like he can go. Like I said, I've only seen one match of his, but you know, this should be good. Um, having them go, uh, up against Swagger this early, I thought they were going to do something else with Swagger, but you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, so the party crew came in there. They had, you know, and you know, Adam Rose is doing the whole trust fall stuff. I think he did like two of them. I think he did one when he, on his entrance and then one after the, uh, the match was over. And, uh, it was pretty good. I liked it, you know? Um, it was pretty good. So we get ready for the real deal. We get ready for the Shield versus the Wyatts, which now the first time I did this uh, a couple months back, I think it was before WrestleMania, it was really, really good. You know, it was real good. And this time it wasn't really bad. It was, it was, the, the match wasn't as, as clean, um, as, as I wanted it to be. It was a couple things that they kind of, they missed a couple spots here and there, uh, and that kind of thing. But everybody got their stuff in and, and, and it was, it was pretty good. Um, but of course we knew exactly what was going to happen here. Um, you know, we were going to see, uh, evolution show up sooner or later. And, um, and so on show enough, they show up and, you know, basically it was pretty cool because they didn't really, they didn't really get a chance to really get and insert themselves into the match, uh, like they wanted to, uh, you know, cause they were trying to get in the ring, Batista and Orton, they took, uh, a flipping swan, t- uh, swan time from, uh, Seth Rollins and they never did make it into the, the ring. Uh, Triple H gets in and, and, and immediately meets a Superman punch from Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns turns around into the Sue's sister, Abigail, from Bray Wyatt. Wyatt's won the match. I didn't know how that was going to go. I didn't think it was going to be an actual clear finish on this match. I thought it was going to be, 
a disqualification or it was going to be like a, a no contest. Uh, but they gave the whites the win. Um, I don't know. I guess further to further uh, emphasize how Triple H is, is 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 systematically trying to break them down. Um, you know, of course, then the Evolution gets in and, and puts the beat down on uh, the Shield. So apparently, this is going to go a while. So I mean, we got we got the payback uh, pay per view coming up in a couple of weeks, and you know, a lot of questions being raised that uh, that pay per view is being held in the great state, uh, great city of, of Chicago, Illinois. And you know how what, what everybody is saying. I'm not even gonna go there, but everybody's kind of saying it. Um, it should be good. This, so this whole build up should be good this month. I think we should get some really good WWE programming and that kind of thing. And um, I don't know. So um, it should be. It should be. It, it should be good. I, I like this whole dynamic um, with these three man. I think we got four three man teams in um, in WWE. Right? We got the Shield. We got the the Wyatts. We got uh, Evolution and Three and B. Right. Um, and I don't know how many regular tag teams we got. I know we got Los Matadores and Rybaxel. I think that's it. Then that's all we got. Yeah. But so that's the raw review this week, man. Until next time, man. I will see y'all. Oh, I'm your boy Big you Q. Yeah, take it this? easy. Da, na, na, na. Your posterior better contact someone at once. The following is a production of TeamBoyTV.com.